Good afternoon and welcome to the Mila Resources PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout the recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab situated in the right-hand corner of your screen. Just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all the questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Alistair Goodship, Exploration Manager, Mark Stevenson, Executive Chairman. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for joining us for this presentation on Mila Resources. Um, we started Mila Resources as a shell several years ago to look at cash-strapped assets around the world, and ones where we thought we could add a value by using our skills in the capital markets to uh, advance the projects uh, at a faster pace than the management teams in place had already uh, started. Um, we looked around, we were looking for um, companies with a clear path to deliver shareholder value. And I think we found some very exciting projects so far um, in the last couple of years. So there's the notices, which you can read in your leisure. And this comes into the three projects that we have at the moment. Uh, we started with a project in uh, Western Australia called Kathleen Valley. Um, this had originally uh, been uh, explored for the lithium potential, where there were shows of lithium at surface. Um, the management team at that time spent their money on an, aero, on an aeromagnetic survey, which actually came up with very good anomalies for gold. So they took the money that they had and they put in some very exciting drill holes in the southern portion of, of their project. And then realized that they, they needed a bit more backing to get to the next stage. And that's where we came on board. And we, we've been working on that for the last couple of years. Um, our new project, Queensland Copper and Gold, we've just taken on board. And once again, that has had not only historical drilling or uh, mining actually from old timers, but over more recent years, um, some significant drilling results as well. So these three projects all fit our criteria of looking for cash strapped assets that we thought we could add value to um, with a clear path to delivering shareholder value. Um, they're, they're particularly attractive to us because they are in mature mining areas. Um, like I said, they've, they've had his initial work carried out on them, but also they've all three of them are surrounded by uh, established mining companies, which we're going to in detail later. So Kathleen Valley, as I said, was our first uh, project we looked at. And you can see on this map, um, the pink lines are the lithium pegmatites that run north, north to south from Lion Town's um, property, which is two kilometers north of us, uh, running down to the southern middle south of our, our property. They're particularly interesting because they are at surface, so they've all been mapped already. And they were interested in Lion Town because it showed the southern extent of their, uh, their structure that they've got to the north. Um, there's also the aeromagnetics for the gold that have shown uh, four uh, potential uh, properties there. And then what's interesting on this is the uh, mining we've done has been down on the coffee project in the bottom of the, um, the map in the red square. And that's an area that already had heritage clearance and some initial drilling on it. And that's where we focused our drilling up to date. Um, we were at the stage of looking to start um, exploring our northern um, target um, when the negotiations with been having with Liontown um, 
became more serious. And so we haven't really developed or done any work on those northern projects because the deal we've got with Liontel, not only is it very exciting for the lithium, but we can use their experience, particularly on the heritage work, to get the clearance for the whole of our area. So lithium, oh, Lion Town, with their lithium project, which is very close to us, has the same um, sensitivities from a cultural point of view as our property. Um, Lion Town have been very, very careful the whole way through their process process to make sure that all the exploration work was been done in, in conjunction with the First Nations to make sure that they had a clear pathway to be able to get into the mining in this area. So they, they've got huge amounts of experience on this and it is very, very sensitive area. But for Town to ever you know, get to mining on our property, we've got to take it stage by stage to make sure that we're keeping everybody on side. Um, Alistair will talk in more detail about the projects and the grades, etc., on this later in the presentation. Um, and as I said, this is a um, slide that really shows where we are in Australia. Obviously, Kathleen Valley is uh, in deep um, Western Australia, but there is very, very good infrastructure because we are surrounded. We've got Bellevue to the south, Lion Town to the north, and numerous other um, properties around us um, where there's you know, major highways and the whole infrastructure for getting drilling rigs, etc., are very uh, available. And the same in Queensland. Um, we are relatively close, a couple of hours from the coast. Uh, it's a strong mining jurisdiction, and we've got three significant miners um, very, very close to us once again. Okay, I'm going to pass over to Alistair because he's just been uh, to Australia, to our Queensland project, to, um, to do the due diligence. And while he's been there, He's been uh, getting the map mine plan ready, or the exploration project ready, uh, and also working with um, our fellow director, Neil Hutchison. Um, and he's up to speed with where we are with um, advancing these projects. I'll pass you over to Alastair now. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Uh, yes, just got back from a very exciting trip to see the Queensland projects. Uh, just to cover off Kathleen, Lithium and Gold first, I will speak more about these in a moment, uh, but those are advancing, but the heritage clearance is the, the key issue there and Liontown are progressing well and uh, sensitively through that, so we are optimistic for how those uh, products are going to advance. Queensland Gold and Copper, in terms of Miele's active exploration, um, will be taking full responsibility, as will be our main focus in the next uh, few months to year. Uh, we already collected, did some mapping, collected good rock chips and looked and observed a lot of mineralization whilst Neil and myself were on the ground. So we expect to start getting some encouraging results uh, in the near term. And then our plan is for geophysics and then drilling in kind of, you know, the next few months, which I will speak to more in the coming slides. But for now, I'll just pass back to Mark for the next slide. Okay. so. This is our board of directors. Um, it's um, equally split, really, between um, Lindsay and myself have got uh, long backgrounds in the city where we've got very good backing from our investor base, um, but also a network of um, potential projects to come through. Um, so we get to see not just the ones that are looking to um, list on the market, but we're seeing all, all the guys um, with their projects as they come through London, through our contact base. Then we have Neil in Australia, who is a very experienced um, geologist, and Alistair, who's heading up a team um, of some other geologists as well that we work with very closely. Um, 
as the exploration manager, but also he does all the deep diving on the due diligence that we've been looking at and projects uh, over the last year or less since uh, we've done the deal with uh, lithium on with Lion Town. Um, it's given us the opportunity to go out and look for more projects. Okay, and this this shows, I think, not only you know the capital structure, but what's very interesting is interesting to me is the percentage of the issue, the the ordinary shares that are held by the different groups, and we've had a very very good backing by our brokers. And the shareholding has stayed pretty similar across the board um, since the IPO. Um, I think uh, the shareholders have followed us at every fundraising that we've done over the last few years. Okay, back to Alistair. Thank you. So, yeah, I'll just talk quickly to the lithium partnership uh, in Kathleen Valley and where we are with that. As Mark mentioned, Lion Town take the lead on this one. They have, they know the geology of the area and they have the relations um, for the native title clearance and managing those relationships. Uh, we know there's lithium in the license and that's why Lion Town wanted to get in there and explore. At the moment, the heritage clearance is the main uh, control on work. There have been advances recently where rock chips have been gathered and uh, work is advancing on the ground there but it's a process that has to be worked through and obviously each stage of exploration work scales up and its impact becomes greater so lion town are just carefully working through that process and the scale of works they want to undertake and making sure that they have good agreements in place at every stage we are very excited for it the data that lion town get in the north of the license will be fed to us we basically get the data set without having to spend any money on it which is a very good position to be in we know it's going to be high quality as well because they are an advanced company who have got an asset to production. Um, so they have standards they have to work to. So we're confident that it's a good deal for us. Uh, it does take a bit of patience, but we like where it's heading. And to drive into kind of Kathleen Gold, as Mark said, the initial drilling at the south of the license returned some very encouraging intercepts, but some structural uh, factors that we need to understand better. The plan was to move north and test the targets in that part of the license. But as mentioned, Lion Town then came in with this interest in the lithium and the exchange of data between us, which is just a good deal um, for us. So it's better for us to leverage off their work, which will help inform us on the gold occurrences and the structures in that area. And in the meantime, it enables us to go and look at other projects, which can also generate value for us. Um, as we don't have to, to directly manage this one, but just maintain our relationships. Which brings me to the new assets that we brought on board. Um, so yes, Drill Ready, Queensland Gold and Copper Portfolio, uh, which we are funded to get the work underway on. We have these three licenses in uh, Northeast Australia and Queensland, and they are large land packages. Um, but we're not daunted by that because there is some very good historical exploration that was undertaken within all three licenses. Uh, both Yarrow and Mount Stedman had uh, pre-2012 Jork resources on them. So the initial heavy lifting was done on the exploration there and zeroing in on mineralization and continuity was undertaken. And the Monal license in the north has multiple occurrences of outcro outcropping mineralization, both copper and gold and porphyry systems nearby Mount Canada, uh, which are very encouraging as well, that that's a slightly earlier target. But I'll speak to each of these individually now and explain why we liked it and what we plan to do with them. Our primary target within these three licenses is Yarrow. Uh, we like it because in the 90s, the initial resources of about 60,000 ounces were established from surface down to only about 60 meters. Since that time, the exploration has been stalled, essentially. There have been people who've had a look at it, nearly drilled it in 2007, and looking for continuity and extent, or strike extent on the mineralization. And then recently, many peaks also had the license, but decided to focus on a cobalt uh, mineralization discovery in another area and didn't 
Again, the goal didn't really get the attention it deserves. What we like is the fact that, as I said, this isn't an early stage project. This is post-discovery. The work back in the 90s was good quality. The exploration team then zeroed in on mineralization. They drilled it. They found good grade. They found continuity. They could define resources. They took that first step, which really brings the risk profile down. But due to the market at the time, and then just circumstance with kind of which companies hold it and funding ever since, the step out from those initial resources has never been done. It's understood and there are drill intercepts to 150, 200 meters beneath, which intersects good gold grades. There's extensions to the width of the mineralization as well, which have not been tested and some which weren't included in the initial resource. So there's a clear pathway there for us to take control of it, review the data, and then quickly start to add value. Also, the neighboring Mount Rawdon mine and Krakow uh, demonstrate that there are sizable deposits within this area. And both of those have been very successful operations. Uh, one thing we observed on the ground there is access is extremely good. There's minimal kind of heritage issues in the area as well. It's very good landholder uh, relationships as well. So there's no clear obstacles to us getting on with the job here, um, which is what we intend to do. In terms of the next work on Yarrow, uh, the, the uh, obvious is obviously historical data review and digitization, but we are in the process of getting quotes for geophysics surveys to update those. The last one's done properly within the 80s, which still is very encouraging, but we can get better results these days. And then we will review the historic drilling database and our aim would be go to get in beneath the previous resources and start expanding that known area of minimization uh, within the next few months. Mount Stedman is a similar story to Yarrow. It's a smaller license, or but uh, it had a historic resource defined uh, in the center, again, from surface down to about 60 meters uh, with similar grades to Yarrow, which again, was never followed up. And multiple gold occurrences along strike where visible gold was found in multiple localities that were never tested by, the, by trenching or drilling. So the, from our point of view, again, there's clear targets that we can get after quickly and generate good news and shareholder value. Again, access is excellent. Landholder relationships are great as well. There's nothing in the way for us to really just oh. this one as well. So again, we will commission some geophysics over this to update it, review the historical data. Uh, we have rock chips from here as well, which we uh, hope to get some encouraging results from in the due course. And then we will push forward with the next stages of exploration. The Manal license is a little earlier stage. Uh, this one still has some geological puzzling out to do, but this is a real pipeline of targets. Uh, the photos there are from the field trip and there are mineral occurrences of copper, gold and copper gold uh, across the license. There are the historic workings for gold at uh, Monal itself, where about 20,000 ounces were mined at the end of the uh, 19th and uh, beginning of the 20th century, but no consistent systematic exploration has ever been done over those those occurrences. Again, those are from surface. We observed you know, rich sulfide veins within the, uh, the hillsides there. And again, the access is good. So the next logical step is just to update the historic data, get some geophys. We have a number of geo or rock chips from there as well, which we expect to come back with some encouraging grades. And this one, we will take a bit more of our time on um, to understand the geology, but we do like it. It's a big license. It has some good resources around it from other exploration companies. And this has a real potential to generate a pipeline of targets to return value uh, to Mila. I'm going to hand back to you, Mark. Okay. So I think you can see from that, we've, we've, we've got three very exciting projects there. Um, and the news flow over the next few months should be very exciting for us. Um, we really are you know, excited about what uh, Lime Town are, are doing currently. They've now um, started production themselves. So that, that has um, made the work with the Jawal people, uh, the, the First Nations in Australia, uh, the relationship now um, to enable us to start looking in more detail across that project. 
Um, like I said, they've actually been on site in the last few weeks uh, with uh, representatives from the Joao family office uh, looking at rock chips. And it is just a process of time on that one. And then um, Alistair has been on the ground um, and we're ready to go um, with the work he's just explained. Um, I, I think that's, um, I've really just covered, but Australia really has become a very sensitive uh, country for um, dealing with the traditional landowners. And we're making sure that we're, we're taking all of this very, very carefully. And that was a big part of the due diligence that we've done with the Queensland projects as well. Make sure everything was in place, ready for us to start on that project as well. So it comes back to the investment case of us, you know, finding these assets that were cash strapped. Um, and we've now got, you know, multi commodities for us uh, across our portfolios to give us our diversification. Um, as gold's now coming back into vogue, um, it's picking up on that front. Um, all the projects we look look for, you know, they have a lot of value uplift for us with uh, limited amounts of drilling. And that I think can be shown with the deal we've done with EMX, the royalty company. Um, we actually had to pitch for this deal, um, not, not on a financial basis, but on a, an ability basis. Not only did we need to have the money in place to do the drilling, but we had to have the team in place that would be able to do it um, in a correct and timely manner, manner which they were very impressed with. Um, and that comes back to the low cost of these assets. That one, uh, EMX, has a royalty over the project. And the cost for us to, to exercise the option that we've got was only, well, the option only cost is 25,000 Australian dollars initially. And we've only got to spend 425,000 um, on it over the next year to be able to exercise the option, which is a quarter of a million pounds, which is worth very well within our financial capability. Um, Going back, Australia, as you know, is a low risk mining jurisdiction. Although we've been looking across the world, um, there, there are lots of um, very exciting jurisdictions. Uh, and Australia was just happens to be one where we've uh, built our experience at the moment, um, which comes back to the board and our experience um, in the geology geological side, but also the capital markets. And you know, all these projects have you know, lots of people around us, lots of mining companies surrounding us um, that we hope to get more joint ventures and deals with down the road. Okay, thank you. I think that pretty much fills us, finishes us on the presentation and we're ready for um, questions. Perfect. Mark, Alistair, thanks very much for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions. You can do that just by using the Q&A tab, which is situated on the top right -hand corner of your screen. But just while the company take a few moments to read the questions that have been submitted today, I'd like to remind you that the recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides on the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. As you can see, we have received questions both pre-submitted and throughout today's live event. And Alistair, if I could just hand over to you to chair the Q&A, that'd be great, and I'll pick up from you at the end. No problem, thank you. Okay, we'll start with the one at the top. So, uh, when do you expect Lion Town to complete the environmental and heritage surveys in Kathleen Valley? And do you expect them to then immediately commence exploration activities? Um, I'll comment on this and Mark and Shaw say a few words. Um, it's an ongoing process. As I mentioned, the guys are able to get access. The guys I mean Lion Town can get access depending on scale of their works. So, recently they were allowed in to do some initial mapping and rock chips, um, which is the first step along the road. Uh, then obviously the next scale of exploration moves towards trenching and drilling, which is more destructive. So they have to uh, tread carefully with their relationship. But obviously as Mark has explained, they do have an extremely good established relationship uh, with the peoples of that area. 
Mark, do you want to say a few things on that? Um, no, only really the, the experience of some of the other companies not lying town in Western Australia really have been delayed from getting into production by not treating um, the First Nations with the respect. Um, and that, I think, really, you know, was one of the main reasons that we, when we saw that Liontown were interested in looking for the lithium, we just really thought we could gear up off their experience. They've got a whole team of people that just specialise in getting the heritage clearances, um, and that's their, their professional uh, skills. So that, that is a huge um, well, capital saving for us, really, as much as anything else, because it is very expensive. Um, as well as, you know, they, they've flown the drone survey over the whole of our area, which is very useful for targeting where you want to look at. But it also it, it points out the flora and fauna of the different areas, so that when we do start looking, we can see if there's anything sensitive on that side as well. Um, I'm sorry, just on the timing though, um, I think it is very key that they came on board now because uh, we're running in towards the Christmas summer holidays in the Australian um, area. So hopefully um, the reason they wanted to get on board with a bit more speed now, we've got a couple of months um, to get some work going and then Lion Town will be able to do the work during the summer period. Um, which gets very hot in that part of the world, um, ready to go to the next level in the new year. Good. Okay, thanks. Mark, I'll give the next one to you. Please, can you go through the structure of the deal and the various milestones? I would like to understand what sort of dilution Miele shareholders will be looking at. Well, as I said, the deal that we've just just completed um, it is very very low cost for us we've got an option and we we get to excise the option by doing the, the drilling in in the ground so for you know the twenty five thousand Aussie dollars um, that we've paid for the option if we we're not physically paying anything more than that for the asset so it really is just the cost of the in the ground work over the next year uh, to the point where we can exercise the option. Um, when we go back to the lithium and lion town, that was an exceptional um, opportunity for us as well, because we initially, you know, lion town get 80% of the um, lithium. <coughs> or value of that, um, but they pay for all the heritage work, all the exploration for the lithium um, up to the point that they take take that control for the 80%. And they pay milestones for us. Um, sorry, I've got it written down somewhere. Um, but basically it's uh, 2.2 million Aussie dollars over the two, two stages to get um, their 80%. So once that's opened up, then we're in the position, we've got the cash room ready uh, from the fundraising we did last year, um, budgeted for continuing with the mining or the drilling campaign up uh, in the Northern targets. So I really don't see any dilution in the near future. Cool. That's good, thank you. I'll take the next one, which is, can you explain any more about your plans in Queensland and how the minimum spending commitments will be spread amongst the three properties? Uh, I'd say the headline plan is to generate value for shareholders and develop these assets. We, of course, do have that minimum spend included in the deal. Uh, the good thing is, uh, within Queensland, the licenses we've taken on are mostly outcomes-based, which means Good results then require follow-up, but it's not dictated to by the Queensland government what we need to do with it. So we are able to have a lot of flexibility with where this spending commitment goes to. 
our focus, as mentioned, is very much on Yarrow to start with, the established resources there, uh, proving the potential of those and you know, the upside within those licenses um, as to then you know, take our, our investment case forward and generate some excitement um, for the shareholders and the market as well. Mount Steadman will also get a fair amount of attention. Uh, again, existing resource, uh, a lot of the heavy lifting on geology has been done there. So we're confident we can advance that a bit more quickly. And Monal, that one is, I'd say, that's that pipeline project for us. So we'll take a bit more of our time on that one. Um, in the coming months, it won't get as many funds, but it will certainly get dedicated attention from experienced professionals who are, know how to sift through the data and decide what looks good and what looks doesn't, what doesn't. And then we'll take that forward as and when. Next question. Do you still see Kathleen Valley as your primary asset, given its proven gold and lithium prospectivity? Happy to answer that one, Mark. It's still, yeah, it's a prime asset for us. Uh, the gold is highly encouraging. As mentioned, we would have gone and done further exploration work on the gold, but the Lion Town deal came along. And it's much better for us just to leverage off the work they do. So they are doing the exploration work for us. They're picking up the cost of heritage surveys. We're not having to spend a penny on that, but we're still getting value from that deal so we definitely want to see it advance and we expect it to uh, we just have to have that patience with the heritage process and myself and neil do keep very much across the geological info coming out then we hope and expect that's going to increase um, again as the heritage process is worked through and line to increase their amount of work next one do you have a plan for improved communication and pr over the incoming over the coming months Great start with the IMC call, by the way. Uh, yes, uh, very much so. Uh, we understand it can be frustrating for investors to uh, hold part of a company and then not hear any updates. Um, can assure you in the last few months and year, there has been a lot of work going on in the background. Uh, bringing these new assets on board means we, again, we have control over assets where we are confident we're going to generate good news flow, return value quickly, and we will want to talk about it and keep investors informed. So. You'll probably see some more of my face uh, in the coming months as well, and obviously Mark as well. So that, that is an easy one for us to answer. Uh, yeah, I'll give this one to Mark. Does the board see a shift towards becoming a multi-asset mining company, or will it continue focusing primarily on high potential post-discovery projects? Uh, that's a very interesting question. It is. Um, so the projects we've looked at so far have always all appealed to us because we could see an exit route, whether it's um, getting a joint venture or building them up to spin them off. So I think that is more our, our, our direction. Um, I think, you know, with uh, the Queensland project, um, once again, we've got some sound neighbors um, but whether we go to the point that we're told told treating it um, or we pass it on as a project um, will depend on the work we've done but we're very much into trying to add value for shareholders so um, if the opportunity comes along um, to spin it off or um, or to pass the asset over to somebody to take it to the next stage faster than us, then we would um, look at every opportunity, um, in, including, you know, where our assets are currently all in Australia. I don't think there's anything stopping us looking at potentially getting an Australia listing, um, either for the assets or for Mila as a whole. Um, Currently, we've got very good backing from the UK, and we would just be one of many, many uh, small companies in Australia. And I think we, we've got a standout opportunity uh, on the London market. Okay, thank you. Next up. The Yarrell project has a historic non jork compliant resource. Is the intention to convert this to jork compliant? And if so, how much work would this take? Uh, the quick answer on that one is we're not going to try and replicate the work of the 90s. 
um, the framework exists there. Our focus is on demonstrating the potential beyond that resource. So we don't want just to go in and kick out another 30, 60,000 ounces. Um, what we want to do is actually basically step out, fill in the gaps we see on that framework for hanging a larger resource and demonstrate the potential. Of course, the focus eventually is, you know, get a resource on these licenses and that puts real value on the books for Mila. But at the moment, we're confident that the historic data speaks for itself. We can see some gaps with some very obvious questions that need answering, such as, you know, continuity along strike and width and minimization where there is almost all the data you need to actually kind of demonstrate that there's a much larger resource there, but it just hasn't quite been done yet. So that that is our focus. Uh, but of course, resources are where kind of value, scoping, feasibility studies require. So we will be heading there. I'd say the next 12 months, it's very much, let's prove the upside on this um, and our confidence and excitement around, around the projects. Next, EMX also found significant levels of manganese, cobalt, and lithium at Yarrow. Will Mila be investigating this further? Uh, the manganese cobalt uh, occurrence is exciting. It's quite a novel deposit, and there needs to be a bit more research done on it. Uh, we appreciate that many peaks um, were quite aggressive on their exploration of it, and perhaps didn't get the, uh, the results they wanted to. Uh, there is funding available from actually the Queensland government, which EMX previously obtained to help research the deposit a bit more. So we will probably look in that direction rather than commit shareholder funds to it at the moment. But we are very much aware it's, uh, it's something that deserves attention and it's not going to get forgotten about. Uh, we just need to be careful about where we focus. For us, the gold and the resources and the copper potential is very much our clear steely eyed focus at the moment. It's been forgotten for too long. But that's why there's an opportunity there for us. So we're going to make sure we kind of put our money where it can really generate value in the near term. And we'll look at the cobalt and other occurrences. And at the point where we see that there's, we know enough so we can have a really good chance of generating value for shareholders, then we'll go after it. Uh, this one for you, Mark. Uh, when would you go to 80% ownership on Kathleen? Captain Valley. Yeah, I can answer that. Yeah. Okay. So um, we, we've completed all the work we need to go to the 80% on the Kathleen Valley project. So it really is our call on the, um, we're at 30% on the gold and we can go up to 80% by issuing more shares. And we're at 50% on the lithium uh, of that 20%. So currently we have 10% of the lithium and we can go up to 80% of the 20%, which is 16% um, at the time that we issue those new shares, whether it's by, by the gold or the, the lithium to take us up to the 80% of the asset. But that is our call. So, um, we don't need to dilute the shareholders at this stage by issuing new shares to the vendor. Um, it's set on a number of shares. Um, and we can wait to see how the Kathleen Valley progresses. Okay, good. <laughs> the next one's the final one. And I'll give it to you, Mark, um, but I'll precast this while by saying, uh, I'm sure results will encourage this to happen. Um, will directors be buying more shares? Ownership seems low at the moment. Um, in cash cash terms, uh, they're quite low. I've, I've participated at uh, every round um, yeah, and, and bought in the market after the last um, fundraising. Um, I'm, I'm, very much like many other people. My portfolio is not very strong at the moment. Um, and it's not for a want of risk, but it's a matter of liquidity for myself at the moment. And I think uh, that goes for the rest of the board. Um, we, we fully believe in this. Um, yeah. Going forward. Thank you. 
Yeah, no, I think that's a fair one. I think it's probably fair to say at that point that we uh, we have the money to do the work we need at the moment. Um, so probably depending on results, it's easier to encourage further investment. Um, so we're in a good position and directors are able to see what we get over the next kind of 12 months and then build the excitement. Uh, next question, will communications ramp up now? Uh, yes, I think hopefully I answered that in the earlier uh, earlier question. You will see more of us and we expect to uh, have an increasing news flow of positive data uh, from the field, which returns value to shareholders. Can I just comment on that one? Yes. We've, we've, we've purposefully been quiet um, over the last uh, six months, um, waiting for Liontel to uh, to continue their work. So we've not had anything that we could put out on that site. And that is really why we were looking around for other projects that we could be more in control of in the shorter term. And obviously we couldn't really update the market on that um, because it was uh, all confidential information. And we didn't want to overpromise until we'd actually delivered on something. Uh, I don't think it's a good look to to get people excited, over promoted that we're going to find something exciting to get involved with until we've uh, signed on the line. Cool. Probably another one for you, Mark. Um, ASX listing, is this something considered? Yeah, well, as I've, I think I covered this one earlier, but yes, our assets are all in Australia. Um, this this does give uh, London based or we give London based uh, investors an opportunity to invest into Australia, and I think we would at the moment disappear within the many small exploration companies in Australia. Uh, I don't think we would get the traction that we might do in London. However, you know when we develop these uh, projects to a, a position that they can stand on their own. I think the Australian market would be a logical place to spin them into. Okay, good. And then what looks like the last one for now. Um, what will the EMX JV look like when or if the option is exercised? The, it, I, I think there's more to the EMX um, joint venture really. Uh, EMX have uh, over 300 different projects and they, they are a royalty company. Um, and many peaks were not in the position to take the Australian assets forwards as Alistair explained earlier. Um, and we've now built a relationship with them uh, to go forwards. Now, our, clearly our focus is um, getting this up and running. But they're very supportive of us. They have um, geologists in Australia that we can use that already know this asset, uh, and they've made them all available to us to help um, Neil and Alistair with the work on the ground. Um, so it, it is a, a proper joint venture with them. They're, they're interested in the royalties down the road, and they believe we have the team in place to be able to deliver them. Yeah, I think it's a good comment. Our experience of working with them so far has been excellent. The deal is very good for us. It's uh, it's not front loaded. They let us get on with the work, and they our success is their success. Um, so we see that as something positive going forward. Perfect. Yep. I might just jump in there. Thank you very much for answering all the questions you can from investors. Of course, the company can review all the questions submitted today, and we will publish those responses on the Investor Meet Company platform. But just before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to you both, Mark, could I just ask you for a few closing comments? Okay, I, I think this, uh, I probably answered it a few times, but I, we are focused on get, keeping the market up to date now. We've got our, our projects in place, and I, I think the news flow coming over the next six to nine months is, is going to be consistent. Uh, and we're going to make sure that we're using uh, particularly you know, the social media platforms like this to the full extent to make sure that our shareholders are kept up to date with the story and have the opportunity to ask us personal questions. 
Mark Alistair. Thank you once again for updating investors today. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you know be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Miele Resources PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good afternoon to you all. Thank you. Thank you.